Bacter 2100 Plus Vacuum System Operation and Care. Hello, my name is Kerry Alcott. Today's class is part of a series of classes that cover different areas of the Vactor Plus model. The difference from the older 2100 Classic series to the new 2100 Plus series is how Vactor has routed the airflow through the body. In the 2100 Classic series, the air that came into the body from the boom was directed to the rear door deflector and had to make a U-turn to go back forward to the screens. In the 2100 Plus, the airflow enters from the boom, hits a deflector in the middle of the body that deflects the debris down to the floor. The screens are at the rear of the body, so the airflow through is in a straighter line to increase the efficiency of the airflow. Vactor has added the optional cyclones to aid in removing debris carryover. The air that comes up the 8-inch boom hose enters a 10-inch tube at the front of the body's transition. As the air enters the body, the speed starts to slow down because of the increase in area size. The heavier debris will start to drop out of the airflow. The deflector will deflect debris to the floor. The cleaner air is pulled into the screens at the rear of the body. The screens stop lighter items like paper and leaves. Inside the screens are stainless steel float balls. They will float up and shut off the air flow if the body becomes over full. After the air goes through the screens, the passage is out to the cyclones. Inside of the cyclone, the air is turned against the inside wall of the cone, causing debris to drop down and accumulate in the cleanouts. The clean air exits the cyclone at the top and joins the air from the other cyclones, then is piped to the vacuum source. Let's review this process. As the area increases, debris starts to fall out. Contact with the deflector, deflecting debris to the floor. Cleaner air pulled to the screens. Air enters the cyclone. The cyclones centrifugally separate the debris from the air. All the cyclone outlets collect and go to the vacuum source. Let's look inside the debris body. Ten inch inlet. Deflectors. Float ball indicator. Body washout nozzle. New style body washout nozzle. Replaceable cyclones. The vacuum source could be a fan or a positive displacement blower. A fan unit comes in two configurations. A two-stage fan or a single-stage fan. This picture shows how a fan works. As the fan spins, it will pull the air from the collector tube attached to the cyclones. 
the vector fan is called a centrifugal air compressor. The center of the fan is wider than the outer diameter. This is what gives us the strength, or called higher water column of lift. After the air goes through the fan, it is exhausted to the atmosphere. The fan can be driven by a hydraulic system or an auxiliary engine. The single engine hydraulic fan system is driven by a variable displacement pump mounted on a transfer case. This allows full chassis engine horsepower to the pump. The fan is driven by a piston motor that is mounted to the step-up Cotta transmission. The fan mounts directly to the output shaft of the transmission. The hydraulic cooler uses a hydraulic fan to keep the system cool. The auxiliary engine fan is driven by a tier 4 John Deere engine. A four cylinder engine is used for a single stage fan, and a six cylinder engine is used for a two stage fan. A fluid coupler is used to transfer power to the step up Cotta transmission, so there's no adjustments of belts or clutches. The fan mounts directly to the output shaft of the transmission. A dipstick is provided for checking the Cotta transmission fluid. Cleaning the fan. There are cleanouts provided on the fan housing. With the unit not running, open the cleanouts and use a handgun to wash the fan. At the bottom of the fan housing are drains. There is an optional flush system that is directly tied to the Vactor water pump. The control panel on the front hose reel will allow you to start the auxiliary engine and control the throttle. With the fluid coupler there is no other engagement needed. Positive displacement blowers. The PD blowers used in the Vactors range in size depending on your specifications. These are some examples shown of different sizes and vacuum capacities. A positive displacement blower has a greater strength in vacuum lift with lower air flows than what a fan has. A fan has a greater air flow but is not as strong in vacuum as a PD blower. The application for a fan is above water level and a blower works better underwater. A fan can move 8,000 cubic foot a minute of air, but will only lift a column of water about 9 to 10 feet. The air path on a PD blower is from the debris body The air enters into a microstrainer that screens anything too large that could damage the blower. Then into and through the blower. Once through the blower, it is exhausted to a silencer. And then to the atmosphere. A blower has two figure eight lobed shafts that are supported by ball bearings on each end. On one end a drive shaft turns the upper shaft and on the opposite end a gear set turns the lower shaft keeping perfect timing. The clearance between the shafts and the shaft to the housing is only six thousandths of an inch. 
As the upper shaft turns, the gear set turns the lower shaft in the opposite rotation. The lobes of the shaft grab air from the inlet and push the air out the outlet. Every rotation moves a set cubic inches of air. What determines how much air is moved is the width and the length of the lobe shafts and the speed the shafts turn. To care for our blowers, we need to start with checking the fluid level in each sight glass daily. On the drive shaft end of the blower, there are two bearing caps that have their own sight glass. This oil level should be at half to three quarter full of the sight glass. On the front of the blower gear case, or on the side of the gear case, is a sight glass. This oil level should be at half to three quarter full. Never overfill. Watch for carryover. If dust is exiting the silencer, apply water to what is being vacuumed. If moisture is exiting the silencer, lower the engine RPMs to slow the airspeed through the debris tank. These pictures are of a silencer that is plugged up from excessive carryover. The micro strainer is on the inlet side of the blower and is there to catch any carryover large enough that could cause damage to the blower. The micro strainer is a daily inspection. Any debris caught on the inside of the strainer must be cleaned out. The micro strainer's condition is an indicator to you that you are or are not operating correctly. Too much carryover means too high of operating RPMs. If water enters the blower, it must be removed right away. To remove water from the blower, drain the two plugs on the bottom of the micro strainer and remove the plug on the right side of the silencer. Next, start the blower and run it until all the water has stopped draining from the silencer. Continue to run the blower long enough to evaporate all the moisture out of the blower. Remember, it would only take six thousandths of an inch of rust to seize up a blower. Conkle valves are in the system to induce cool air to keep the blower from overheating. When the vacuum gauge on the front hose reel reaches 15 to 18 inches of mercury, the conkle valves will open. The conkle valve will need to be serviced when it no longer opens when it should. On the bottom is the nozzle, that is where the air enters. The disc is spring loaded, and the compression screw adjusts the spring tension, all in the body of the valve. To disassemble, remove the two screws that hold the ID label. Remove the compression screw and remove the internal parts and clean using a wire wheel. Reassemble the parts and use the compression screw to adjust. To adjust, block the airflow at the 8 inch vacuum boom hose. Run blower up to 1500 RPMs and block airflow to the opposite relief valves. Turn compression screw in to increase vacuum to the desired inches of mercury. Adjust each valve one mercury apart. Reinsert the screws and the label to lock the compression screw.
The vacuum boom comes in different designs. The newest design is the 5x5 boom. It will telescope out 5 feet and extend 5 feet. The 5x5 and the telescopic boom need to be cleaned at the end of day's use. With the low pressure handgun, vacuum engaged, 8 inch vacuum hose half blocked, shoot water at the seal where the inner tube extends from the outer while extending and retracting the inner tube. There will be two seals on the 5x5 boom and one on the telescopic boom. The inner tube of the boom has a band on the inside end to center the tube in the outer. This band can scrape dirt to the front seal area and compact the dirt. This will eventually jam the boom when fully extended. The difference between a fan and a blower. Fans move air in higher volume and speed. Fans move dirt faster away from worksite. Fans need less water and move regular dirt much faster. Fans are less expensive. Fans are more productive machines for collection and catch basin work. Blowers pull slurry type materials over longer distances. Blowers can be submerged to vacuum material. Blowers need higher water usage for effective vacuuming. Blowers are more expensive. A fan will move around 20,000 CFM cubic foot a minute. A blower will move around 3,200 CFM. Vacuum measurements. There are two ways to measure the strength of vacuum we use in this industry. One way is how high can we lift a column of water with vacuum. The second is how high can we lift a column of mercury with vacuum. One inch of mercury is equal to 13.59 inches of water column. So if a fan lifts a column of water of 120 inches or 10 feet, that would equal 8.8 .8 inches of mercury. Most blowers we use will pull 15 to 18 inches of mercury. If we put our vacuum hose underwater, 15 inches of mercury will lift that column of water 203.85 inches or 16.9 feet. Air conveyance. For either system to pull material further, we need to induce air to convey the material greater distances. The Higby nozzle is typically used with a fan machine. There is a 3 foot and a 6 foot length available. As the vacuum lifts debris and water, air is drawn between the outer tube and the inner tube to holes in the inner tube close to the bottom. This aerates the debris and the water and conveys it to our debris body. With this method, materials can be conveyed over hundreds of feet straight up. An air gap is typically used with a PD blower. Longer vacuum tubes can be used for deeper pulls. The band around the middle of the air gap allows you to adjust the amount of air that is needed to pull from different depths. If your blower is set for 15 inches of mercury, you could vacuum 15 feet underwater. And thank you for watching.